going on, everybody? It is Thursday, May 17th. We've switched sides because I've got better real estate over here. Jake fits in better on this side, so we're mixing it up today. Going crazy. Going crazy on this eight-game slate with just absolutely trash pitching. So I don't mind that too much because I'm in a great mood. I picked a home run last night. Jake, what's new with you? Oh, you should be in a great mood. That's awesome. Uh, Had to have finally got on. Yeah, you got on the board. Now, now the floodgates are open, and you can keep uh, you can go on the Chris like streak here soon. So, and I'm I'm good. Um, Trevor Cahill last night was awful in the first. Uh, so I didn't really open DK after that, but he kind of bounced back. He didn't really strike guys out. So I don't know if he's still hurt. I gotta check his velocity and stuff. Um, Brave stack came alive in the eighth. Yeah. Um, but not enough. And yeah, I was I was really really disappointed that Caleb Smith was not on the slate. So I I was probably gonna play him over Cahill like ninety nine percent. So I was disappointed. Had to go with Cahill and whatever. It didn't work out. It wasn't my favorite slate though. No, not a, not so much. Um, I had an okay night. Uh, up a little bit, so I'll take what I can get. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the, as far as I'm concerned, that's like winning a GPP, just being up a penny. <laughs> yeah. We ready to dive into this? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Alrighty. First game up, Padres and Pirates. Uh, Padres with a 3.4 run implied total, Pirates 4.3. It's a 60% chance to win for the Pirates. Eric Lauer going for the Padres. Uh, Chad Cool going for Pittsburgh. Uh, not really looking at either Lauer or Cool, although Lauer grades out a little, grades out decently on uh, on DraftKings with that forty eight hundred dollar price point. Um, but this isn't a pitching game for me. It's barely a hitting game. I oddly like a little bit of the Padres because of their price point and how many lefties they have in there, but uh, nothing of terribly large value here are you looking at anything in this game oh man so chad cool a little bit for 8200 um there's like a handful of pitchers in this like 7k to to cool range like 8200 on dk that i'm considering and i just i don't want to play whoever's gonna end up as the chalk i don't know if it's gonna be cool with that 3.6 run total for san diego um, people do weigh Vegas, which I think you should weigh Vegas a little bit. I'm less likely likely to weigh that into my like who actually gets into my lineup. So I like cool. Um, it's a it's just a really good matchup. Like, and I do think cool can be very very good at times. Um, so he's someone that I'm at least considering. Not sure where I'm at with him though. Yeah, I'll say this much. I got a lot of him on DK when I ran my crunch. He's not a guy that's popping up a lot on FanDuel, but... Yeah, he's just... It's just a really good matchup, and I don't know. I, I want to see what his ownership's going to be like, so I'll definitely be refreshing the ownership projections as the day goes on to see where all these guys are falling. What, what's your guess on him? Because I've got a, a guess, but I'm bad at DK's ownership. Um, man, like... I would say, like, 20, 24... Five percent, maybe. That's exactly I mean, what I was going to say. Yeah, I'm like I said it on the night shift last night, but I'm really interested to see where ownership stands. If people are going to pay up for the two top guys that aren't really top options today. Yeah, it's so weird. Um, so I know one guy's going to be chalky that we'll talk about way later, but outside of that, I'm really confused on ownership. Kind of trying to figure it out. That's going to be my whole day. <laughs> I get that. Yeah, I think Cool is fine on DK, uh, particularly at that price. Like I said, he comes up a little bit for me on DraftKings crunches. Uh, I don't really get him on FanDuel. Um, from a hitting perspective, are you are you looking at the Pirates at all? Because they they didn't come up for me on FanDuel. It's weird that I got more Padres than Pirates. Yeah, I'm, I always kind of avoid the Pirates when they're going up against a lefty because... I'm not a huge fan of Starling Marte, especially not for 4,900. Um, Josh Bell is 4K, like that's fine, but I prefer him from the left side. 
Cervelli, he's got a questionable tag next to his name, right? Do you have that too? Uh, I don't know. I have Cervelli in, if that helps. Okay. Yeah, he, he's like in this lineup that I'm looking at, but I don't know if he's hurt or just sat out yesterday or what. But uh, like he can hit lefties well, but he's almost 4K on DraftKings. So it's just um, I don't like the Pirates against lefties that much because their best hitters are lefties. So They've been mashing lefties this year. Have they really? Yeah, unless this is pulling data incorrectly, which is certainly possible. I mean, David Fries, just in his career, has hit lefties well. So, I mean, I could see going there as a one-off, but... Yeah, they are. They're crushing not, lefties. Yeah, it's not a stack I'm crazy about. Maybe I should look into that more. 131 weighted runs created plus, 500 slugging, 225 ISO. So, uh, I've got some extra stats here up in the schedule section now. Um... K rate for hit for the team as for hitting. This is all hitting stuff. So K rate, slugging, ISO, weighted runs created plus, and hard contact. And that'll be for whatever particular hand the pitcher is. So the Padre stats are showing against a righty. The Pirate stats are showing against a lefty. So they haven't been striking out all that much, and they've been actually mashing the ball. I'm sure it's only like three or four hundred plate appearances at best, but uh, so far they've been they've been solid against uh, lefties. Yeah, um, the hard contact is a little bit concerning. That's that's probably what's weighing them down in my in my stuff. So yeah, because um, the Padres have been decent um, from a hard contact perspective against yeah. righties, but the Pirates that's twenty seven percent is really low. Thirty five percent is like league average. So so I don't know. Maybe they are getting lucky with their their batted balls in play or something. I don't yeah. know. I'm not trying to bash Pirates. <laughs> uh, I think there are a, a couple good plays, just not at price points that I want. Yeah, uh, I'm more focused on Cool, and then if Cool is going to be chalk, which he might end up being, then I would consider Hosmer or Franchi Cordero against him. Yeah, I got a decent amount of Hosmer on FanDuel, a decent amount of Cordero, uh, and then Perella and Jankowski are sort of like the guys that come with it from the stack. Uh, I don't mind Jankowski so much if he's leading off. I wouldn't have expected to see that much ownership on an eight-game slate for a team with a 3.4 run implied total, but especially on a night where like there's not a ton of pitching to pay up for, I wouldn't have thought that the Padres would be a team that I needed from like a value perspective, but here we are. Nice. Yeah. I mean, hitting's not all that great on this slate either, I don't think, so no. it'd be interesting. Yeah, I'm... My guess is this Padres number comes down closer to lock as I manipulate um, some ownership a little bit more, but <laughs> yeah. not really the game for me on the FanDuel side. Yeah. Good to move on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, A's and Blue Jays. Uh, A's with a 4.5 run implied total. Blue Jays 4.8. It's a 53% chance to win for the Blue Jays. Andrew Triggs going for the A's. Aaron Sanchez going for the J's. Um, Triggs, not a guy that I'm looking at. Sanchez, not a guy that I'm really looking at. This is pretty much all hitting for me. Yeah, and I don't... So, I, I don't have an interest in Aaron Sanchez. He's just not striking out enough guys, and the A's lineup is actually pretty good against both hands. So, I like Lowry and Matt Olson especially. Okay. Um, Joyce is three thousand. That's a price point I'm always comfortable playing him at. Um, but definitely Olson for thirty six hundred. Love him. And then Lowry for forty one hundred. Uh, Triggs is a little bit interesting to me. He's got the strikeout stuff to have a really really good start here. The Blue Jays are a pretty good matchup against righties with all those right handed bats in there. Um, I think Triggs is better than what he's shown maybe in, in some of his starts. So he's in my pool of pitchers um, right now at least. Like it's it's a bad run total against him right now at five almost. Is that what you have? Uh, so yeah, four, four point, point eight for the Jays. Four point, yeah. Yeah. So that worries me a little bit, but I do think he can get a bunch of strikeouts here. Okay. 
Yeah, I wouldn't be looking at Triggs on DK. I would go up to the two guys that are just below, uh, above him in price. I'd be more likely to use Samarja or Archer. Right. Um, it's all hitting for me. I have a ton of A's, uh, just so I'm not wrong. So they're the second mo or they're they're the second highest ownership stack on FanDuel for me right now. Uh, from Semyon to Olsen, I have a ton. I do get a bunch of Matt Chapman as well. Uh, I'll likely be very heavy on the A's tonight. And I'll have like half of that for the Blue Jays. So the top four for the Jays look really good. Granderson, Donaldson, Smoke, and Hernandez. And then I'd probably have a little bit of Solarte. He's probably a better option on DK where you get the dual eligibility. Yeah, I, I don't mind Blue Jays bats either against Triggs. He's a guy that when he's getting hit, he's going to get hit really hard. Um, so the lefties for me, Smoke, Solarte and Granderson, um, but I could also see stacking against Triggs just because I could see this one getting out of hand if he doesn't have his good stuff. Like it could go one of two ways. I'm not saying he's Trevor Cahill, but uh, it could go bad quickly against Toronto, who's got some power. Yeah, it's a big run total for this game. Um, yeah. For, so for me, it's it's all offense. I don't want to. Although, you know, who knows at this point. With Every single pitcher today looks basically the same. <laughs> yeah. Aaron Sanchez, I'm just looking at his velocity right now. His velocity was up last start by a mile and a half on his fastball almost. Wow. Um, Must have so, a cup of coffee. Yeah, I don't know what's... And his velocity is kind of bounced up and down, like throughout the season, so I don't know what's going on with him. Maybe someone I need to look at a little bit deeper for 5,700, but I just saw that now, so I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, something to pay attention to for sure moving forward. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably it for this game. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Phillies and Cardinals. Um, I read that in reverse for some strange reason. Ah, Phillies are the road team. Phillies, 3.9 run implied total. Cardinals 4.4. It's a 55% chance to win for the Cardinals. Vince Velasquez going for Philadelphia. Luke Weaver going for St. Louis. Um, I love Luke Weaver tonight. Uh, he's grading out as like my best option on a dollar for dollar basis. Uh, I'm surprised that I'm like that crazy about him, but that's just you know a sign of what Steamer thinks of him. Um, I'm gonna end up with a lot of Weaver. He'll probably be my highest owned pitcher, and I think he looks great on both sites, so I don't have a problem which site you would grab him on. Uh, are you looking at Weaver at all, or Velasquez for that matter? So, I'm not looking at Weaver. I rarely play him when he's going to be popular. I just I think he gets overrated a lot. I mean, that's a good price for him, and it is a good matchup against the Phillies. Um, he's crazy like, cheap on FanDuel. What is he at on FanDuel? 6200 Six yeah. He's only $100 okay. more expensive than Eric Lauer. So that's that's a little bit better. I don't know. I mean, 8K on DraftKings, people are going to pay that for sure. Yeah. And if he's going to be chalked, that even turns me off of him further because I don't think he's all that special of a pitcher, and everyone kind of loves playing him. He's he's had like 40% ownership on slates before. That was more like last year than the year before. But people just love playing this guy, and... I'm just not a fan of his. He doesn't get chases, doesn't get swinging strikes, like average strikeout rate. Um, and then the Phillies do have some good bats, like Carl Santana and Hernandez, whatever you think of Odubel Herrera, um, Reese Hoskins. So it's not a perfect matchup for Weaver either. So I'm off Weaver. Okay. Um, but Velasquez, kind of like with Barrios the other day, and I wrote this in the Spotlight Pitchers article, I wrote up Velasquez. The Cardinals are very righty heavy. They usually have six to seven righties. Um, Velasquez has been awesome against right-handed hitters. Uh, slate leading 31.2% K rate, 1.02 whip, and 18% hard contact against them this year, which is, I mean, those are all really, really good numbers. He gets in trouble with walks and gets wild at times. Um, so it's not without risk, certainly. The Cardinals do have big power, but Velasquez is a guy I like for low ownership tonight. I can see that, particularly on DK. He's really expensive on FanDuel. He's the 
fourth most expensive pitcher on FanDuel tonight, so oh. he's, he's really hard to get to. Uh, I think he makes a as a better play on DraftKings. Cardinals for the season have been not the best against righties. Um, you know, pretty pretty terrible slugging percentage, below average ISO, below average weighted runs created plus. They are doing pretty well on hard contact. Uh, so it's really this weird mixed bag for me because I've got a decent amount of ownership. They're the, they've got the third most ownership of anybody uh, for me on FanDuel this morning. But they haven't been great against righties, so I'm, that's giving me a little bit of pause. And I do like Velasquez, uh, like just sort of in general. Um, it scares me a little bit because of how much swing and miss stuff he has. I don't have yeah. any Phillies bats whatsoever, but I am looking at the first four guys in particular, and then quite a bit of Matt Carpenter at 2,900 uh, if he's hitting sixth. Sure. Yeah, and they're, I'm just looking at the prices now on FanDuel. Those are prices where I'm comfortable playing hitters. Uh, I won't be playing Cardinals because I'm much more likely to play Velasquez. Um, and he showed you how good his swing and miss stuff can be at times. 12 strikeouts in six innings in his last start. Yeah. Like, yeah, Velasquez, he's legit. Um when he's got his stuff going, he's going to strike out a lot of guys. So Absolutely. Um, I don't think I have anything. Yeah, I got absolutely zero Phillies hitters, so I assume you're not looking at anybody there. I like Santana if um, – or I should say Santana and Hernandez and Hoskins as leverage plays if Weaver's going to be chalk on DK. That makes sense. Yeah, if, if Weaver's like – 40% or something really ridiculous, then I think having a line or two of Phillies is uh, at least is uh, a decent pivot. Yeah. Alrighty. Cubs and Braves. Um, Cubs with a 4.6 run implied total. Braves 4.4. It's a 52% chance to win for the Cubs. John Lester going for Chicago. Mike Soroka going for Atlanta. Uh, I don't like Lester at all here. Um, and then Soroka is not really a guy that I'm looking for from a fantasy perspective. Uh, he's more of just like a good pitcher than a fa good fantasy pitcher, in my opinion. So I'm looking at Cubs bats for the most part. Uh, Braves bats just slightly. Uh, are you looking at any of the pitching here? Soroka is... Uh, one of these guys that I'll kind of consider. Um, not sure if I'll end up on him, but he comes up as, so far, what he's done, a pretty good pitcher in, like, my formula, my model that I have here. Um, the matchup isn't good against the Cubs, not a team that I really like targeting against with pitching. Um, so Soroka is just, he's just kind of there for me. Don't want to target heavily against him, but I think Rizzo could certainly get to him. Zobris could as well. Um but Soroka is super cheap, too. The thing I really want to talk about in this game is this Braves offense against Lester. Yeah. So Lester, he's a guy I think I mention every time. Like, I rarely, rarely play him. Not liking him tonight at all. This is, like, his worst nightmare as far as matchup goes. Braves with a ton of right-handed power. Well, not a ton of right-handed power, but a ton of power. Um, some from the right side, Acuna and Albies and... Tyler Flowers or Suzuki, who's ever, whoever is in there, Bautista, Camargo, all these guys can hit lefties. And then the speed aspect of it, um, we know how bad Lester is at holding runners because he can't throw over to first. And these guys are just going to run wild on him if they get on base. So, like, they're going to knock Lester out super early if they st if he starts letting up base runners. I don't see any other way. Um, so Albies, Acuna, Freeman, like, give me all these Braves. They're my favorite stack of the night, and I don't think it's really that close right now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going back to the Braves. I Albies, Acuna, Inciarte, too, lefty-lefty. I, I don't mind that at all. He's priced up. No one's going to play him probably, but if he gets on base, that's a stolen base. He's stealing, like, every single time. Favorite stack? I'm, I wasn't yeah. ready for that. Uh, look, I, I, Albies and Acuna look look good at the top. I do get a little bit of them. Uh, I have a lot of trouble filling out a stack of the Braves. I don't. I don't particularly like Freeman. 
I really, really, really don't like Nick Markakis. Um, Inciarte gives me a lot of pause, too, at that price point. I'd have some trouble uh, going to a Brave stack. But no, that's, that's fair. Albies and Acuna look like really nice options. Yeah, and if you just want to go with Albies and Acuna, that's fine, too. Like, Lester is really good against lefties. But I think... Albies and Acuna, if either one of those guys gets on, they're going to give Lester a ton of trouble. Same with Enciarte. And then who knows who they face out of the bullpen. I'll be looking at that. Um, Lester could have a good start. This stack could go terribly wrong, but I really, really like the Braves. Yeah, so like, I'm on the opposite side of it. I really, really like the Cubs. Uh, I recommended Zobris yesterday as a spotlight hitter. He didn't play, but he looks like another nice option. Uh, I recommended Rizzo as his replacement. He, Rizzo might be there again tonight. I think he's in a really nice spot. I like his price point. Uh, so I got a lot of Zobrist, Bryant, and Rizzo, and Baez um, mm. on my first pass for FanDuel. Schwarber, too. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, oh, this is a Cub stack for me. We are. I wish, I wish we could be on the opposite sides of this. I'd much rather prefer the Braves, it'd be easier for my sanity, but yeah, I'm going to have a lot of Cubs. Yeah. Um, no pitching. No, I mean, I probably won't end up on Soroka. Like, he's fine, but I don't know if this is the spot for him. Um, I mean, I do like Zobris, Rizzo, and Bryant. You could always convince me to play Chris Bryant, but mostly um, focusing on the top of that Braves order, so that's where I'll be at. Whew, I'm interested to see how this one shakes out. I need to start writing down uh, things we talk about that I want to pay attention to because ultimately I'll just forget and this will just go by the wayside. And if the Cubs play well and the Braves don't, like I want to rub it in a little bit. <laughs> you should. Well, we'll be on tomorrow morning and Maybe maybe it'll they'll both go off. Maybe it'll be twelve eleven. That's fine. There's money to be Braves, made for I everyone, hope. Josh. Twelve twelve eleven Braves. That's fine. Let's be specific yeah. here. Cubs don't need to win all one sixty two. All righty, Rangers and White Sox. Uh, Rangers four point nine run implied total. White Sox four point four. It's a fifty five percent chance to win for the Rangers. Uh, Cole Hamels going for Texas. James Shields going for Chicago. Um, we aren't the biggest James Shields fans around here. He's not a guy that I'm going to end up with. Uh, Texas is my favorite hitting stack. And it pains me to say this, but I think I'm going to end up with quite a bit of Cole Hamels, at least on FanDuel. Um, I don't know how much I'd get, how much did I get of him on my first crunch on DK. Yeah, a lot. Uh, it looks like Hamels is going to be... Pitch are like rosterable tonight, and I'm not really sure how to reconcile that in my head because these are two guys that we've talked more shit about than probably anybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hamels for me especially. He's been my kryptonite this year. Uh, I have to give credit to him. He's done a good job at missing bats and just pitching well and surviving. Uh, dude, his hard contact, and this is not the end-all, be-all, but 45% this year. Like, that is stupid against right-handed hitters. I I want some White Sox, especially if Hamill, Hamill's going to get ownership on DK. I think that's a pretty ridiculous price, 10-8 for him there. Um, so I like Abreu, Davidson, and Castillo all have decent chances to take him deep. I'm not on Hamill's. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be he's gonna be quite owned, in my opinion. Man, uh, but, yeah. Which is scary. Super, super scary. I think Abreu looks really nice as a one-off option. Uh, he grades out really well. Both sites, just a nice price point. I get uh, a White Sox stack. Uh, their run total is not bad. A lot of righty batters. If Moncada and Sanchez are hitting at the top of the order, that's what gives me a little bit of pause. Both guys not good against lefties. Um, so something in that Abreu, Davidson, Castillo. Even uh, Tim Anderson range, like I think that's a, a nice option as a contrarian stack to Hamels if his ownership is as high as it seems. But I'm all over the Rangers. 
Yeah, I could actually... I could see Shields pitching well here. Um, I don't think well enough where I would consider playing him. But just going down the lineup, the Rangers do strike out a ton. And, like, their plate discipline numbers are pretty awful. Shields does have good starts from time to time. I don't think I'm crazy enough to play him here on a big slate. Um, so I think the two guys that I really like him for Texas that have a good chance to go deep here are Gallo, duh, and then Nomar Mazzara. So outside of that, I don't have a ton of interest in the Rangers stack, but they are priced well on DK. So I think they're going to be more popular than I like. Yeah, I, I got them the most. Uh, they'll be the guys that I have the most. I mean, for DeShields, Chu, Profar, Mazzara, Gallo, Odor, uh, all those guys are at perfect price points for me. Um, a little bit of uh, Falefa, but not too much. Rangers are going to be the team that I have the most of, barring any sort of weird changes. It's mostly just implied total and matchup against a righty that is just ridiculously hittable. Yeah. Uh, I certainly understand it. I think I'm going to go elsewhere. I want Braves. Um, especially Albies and Acuna. So I'll probably be off the Rangers for the most part. And that's how I'm going to get my James Shields exposure instead of being stupid and playing him for 5K. There you go. <clears throat> Alrighty. Rays and Angels. Rays 3.5 run implied total. Angels 4.3. It's a 59% chance to win for the Angels. Chris Archer going for the Rays. Tyler Skaggs going for uh, the Angels. Um, I don't want to like Skaggs. But he's going to come up quite a bit on DraftKings just sort of because of the way pitching breaks right now. Uh, I get a little bit of him on FanDuel. He's got, he's the most expensive pitcher on FanDuel, actually. Uh, I don't know. Like, I prefer Archer on DK at 6,900. But this one scares me. I don't like Skaggs being so expensive. Yeah, I like Skaggs as a pitcher. Um, the Rays, though... They're actually not an easy matchup against lefties this year. Nope. Um, striking out at about league average, hard contacts, decent, ISO, decent. Um, on base percentage is pretty good. Like, they've just been pretty pesky. And they've got, it makes sense. I mean, Kron and Robertson and Ramos can all hit lefties pretty well. Um, Echeverria doesn't strike out a ton, if I'm remembering that correctly. So Skaggs would be my pay-up option on DK, which is weird to say, like Tyler Skaggs, 10-4. Um, he's a pretty sizable favorite, and I think he's a good pitcher. So I like him, but I don't know if I'll end up with him on my teams. Yeah, that's a weird one. I just The 10-4 price tag is, is a lot for Skaggs. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to end up with probably average-ish ownership on him. And then outside of Trout in this game, I don't really have any interest in hitting on either side. Yeah. Um, I like I like actually a few Angels. So do you think that Archer is going to be popular on DK because of that $6,900 price tag? Popular? Probably not. But he'll have a small amount of ownership. I don't know, maybe like in the 10% range? I could, okay. I could be underselling that, though. Yeah, I don't know. That's why I'm I'm really confused on ownership at this point. Um, I do like Trout, Otani, and Angelton Simmons. Trout's been leading off the last couple games. Yeah. Otani's batting second, which is nice. Uh, maybe get an extra at bat in there. So those are the two guys really, and then Angelton Simmons for forty one hundred. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't see it for the Angels. Um, they're not grading out all that well for me. I don't get the sense that I'll have much of anything there, which kind of surprises me, but it's pretty much just all Trout as a one-off if it exists. Okay. All righty. Tigers and Mariners. Tigers, 3.5 run implied total. Mariners, 4.5. It's a 61% chance to win for the Mariners. Uh, Marco Gonzalez going for Seattle, Matt Boyd going for Detroit. 
Um, Boyd is an absolute no-go for me. And I think that Marco Gonzalez can be like another starting pitcher two option on DK if you need it. But uh, not the sexiest pitching matchup here. I got a little bit of Gonzalez um, when I ran my DK crunch. Yeah, I'm off pitching here. Uh, I'm off the whole game, to be honest with you. Oh, you don't like Seattle bats? Not really. At least not on yeah. Vandal. I barely got them. Uh, no. They have a little bit better pricing on DK. Yeah, I mean... You talk so, about the Seattle Bats while I open my office door and let my dog out. All right, yeah, so Boyd just started against Seattle last week. Uh, he went six innings, six Ks, three earned runs, so decent start for him, quality start, whatever. Uh, I am not playing Boyd. I don't believe in his stuff, and the Mariners do have the Bats to make him pay here. So I'm on Mitch Hanniger. I'm on Ryan Healy, uh, Mike Zunino. I like at catcher, and then John Segura for 4,400 as well. So I actually like a Mariners stack here. The 4.6 run total is pretty solid, kind of reinforces what how I had this game going. I think Seattle scores a bunch of runs on Boyd. And then I just, I don't know if this is true or not, but players who just saw a pitcher see a pitcher a bunch of times during the year, they probably are, are more familiar with this stuff. They know what he's going to throw maybe in certain counts or what he's more likely to throw in certain counts. And they literally just saw Boyd last week. So um, I think that is a slight advantage to the Mariners, ever so slight advantage. Thanks for covering that for me. Had the, had the mutt oh, yeah. in here laying on my couch because uh, barfed on the wife's side of the bed this morning <laughs> to wake <laughs> us up. So uh, I was just letting him chill with me. Um, uh, enough of your uh, Mariners fake news. I'm not on them. Um, now I get the I get a play on Hanniger, Keeley, uh, Segura. They all look good. They've got better pricing on DK. Um, everybody's priced up like a couple hundred dollars too much on FanDuel, so it's probably why I'm not getting a ton of them there. I like that one through five area for the Mariners on DraftKings mm-hmm. if you need to, and you should have enough salary to pay up for something like that. Implied for total sure. is nice. Um, yeah. Tigers have been mashing lefties this year, but I don't get to anything on their side. Castellanos is the only guy for me. I, I honestly cannot see myself playing anyone. Okay, maybe. So Castellanos and Jacoby Jones for 3,200. Just guy yeah. with some power. Strikes out a ton, but Marco Gonzalez isn't going to really strike you out. So um, those would be the two guys, I guess. But not crazy about either one. I hear you. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to have... I'll basically have no exposure to this game, so I hope this one's the dud. <laughs> That'll be what I need. Final game, and this one's going to pain me because uh, Samarja did not pitch well last time, but I think I'm going back to the well. <clears throat> Rockies and Giants. Rockies, 3.7 run implied total. Giants, 4.3. It's a 57% chance to win for the Giants. Chad Bettis going for Colorado. Jeff Samarja going for the Giants. Um, yeah, I, I think Samarja is grading out. Like, I think he's got a really decent chance to be the highest scoring pitcher of the day, which is just, I don't, I'm not really like comfortable saying that. He's got a much, I think he's got a much higher chance to be the highest scoring pitcher than his price point uh, reflects. Uh, he's only 5,900 on FanDuel. Which is crazy because that's the cheapest pitcher of the day on Fandle. I don't, I can't wrap my head around it. Is he just done and I'm wrong? I don't think he's done. Um, I kind of hope other people do because I don't like the idea of playing a chalk Jeff, or yeah, Jeff Smarja. Um, almost forgot his name there for a second. Uh, like he's got a decent swinging strike rate. O swing rate is okay. Um, going to check on his velocity, but from what I looked at last night, uh, everything seems okay with Samarja. Um, the Rockies are really bad against right I, Exactly, and really bad outside of Coors. Um, they're just not the same team outside of Coors, not even close. Um, League average hard is, hit contact rate is 35%. They're at 29. Yeah, they do. They're, they're just... I, I don't target them outside of Coors. I mean, very, very rarely. So, Samarja, 
he's allowed five earned runs in his last two starts. So maybe that's going to be enough to keep some people off. Um, but that 7K price tag on DK and one of the best matchups for righties, like I'm probably going to eat the chalk with Samarja just because there aren't a lot of options and he does open up everything for you. It's just a, a gross underpricing on DraftKings, I think. But you know, on FanDuel in particular, 5,900, yeah. like I have <clears throat> Samarja projected 0.3 points behind Skaggs for the day. Yeah. And Skaggs is the most expensive pitcher. I don't know. And, how, like, it makes me feel like I've got a bug in my shit. And I know that I don't because I eyeballed Samarja's projections from other places. <clears throat> I, I just, yeah. I, I'm going to end up having like a lot of Jeff Samarja, and I don't know what to do about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not expecting any sort of <clears throat> like perfect start here. He does get in trouble with walks, um, at least two in each of his first five starts. But in his last start, he went five and two thirds. 101 pitches <clears throat> was the most he's thrown all year, so that is a little bit encouraging. Um, he's fully stretched out now. Like, if he's pitching well, he's going to go deep into the game. And I'm not all that worried about the strikeouts. Like, that's not why I'm playing him here as much. If he could get like six innings and four strikeouts, like that'd be fine for 7K. Um, so he, he just makes too much sense. What do I have him at? I've actually parsed out uh, people's lines now. So let's take a look at it. I've got Samarja at... Uh, it's like six and two-thirds, six Ks, a walk and a half, six hits. That'd be an awesome start. Yeah. And what do I have his actual projection at? FanDuel, 17.7. So, yeah, I'm going to end up with a lot of Samarja. No, you mean, oh, that was DK, right? Uh, 17.7. Yeah. Yeah, DK. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm looking at a little bit of the Giants bats, but I don't have a ton coming out of this. I like McCutcheon. Um, Brandon Belt looks pretty nice, especially on DK. He's $100 cheaper on DraftKings. So I'd be fine using some Brandon Belt on DK, uh, Longoria. You can you can get a decent stack in those top five. Yeah, you mentioned the guys that I like, McCutcheon, Belt, and Posey. Um, don't really want to stack against Bettis. He's just a okay pitcher for me, maybe a little bit below average, but this park sucks for hitting. Um, there's a lot more hitting that I like elsewhere. Uh, so I won't be super heavy on it. Just Samarja, mostly. Okay. We missed um, we missed the Baltimore-Boston game, by the way. I just realized that. We didn't talk about Kevin Gaussman and David Price. Is it on the slate? Is it a makeup game? It is on the slate. Uh, at least I think. Now, now you're making me double-check that. It must be a makeup game because it's not on my... It's not in my schedule. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... I, don't even, like, I, didn't even, I didn't look at it. I didn't load a single part of it. So do we not? Is it nine games today, then? Yeah, it's nine. Ah, well, that, there's my issue. It's not on my okay. schedule. I can... You want me to, to preview it? Yeah, hit that quick. <clears throat> All right, so we got Baltimore at Boston. There were some weather concerns that I was looking at last night, but it looks like they've kind of gone away. Gaussman is 7,900 on DK. David Price, 8,400. Um, and this game is surprisingly not one that I have a ton of interest in. Uh, Gaussman I like as a pitcher, but terrible matchup against the Red Sox. You saw what they did to Cahill in the first inning. Um, Gaussman can be really awesome at times, but this is not a matchup I want to use him or at a price I want to use him at. So... I don't want to stack against him, but I do like the righties, actually. Uh, Betts, JD, and Bogarts are my favorites. And then Price on the other side. Can't play him here. I, I can't play David Price with, with how he's looked. Uh, the Orioles are a team I love targeting, but weather concerns, um, even though those are kind of gone now. And he's just he's David Price, and I think he's going to get overused here. Um, against nine righties, so no thanks there. I'd rather target him with Machado and Scope 
and even Trumbo rather than play David Price. So Machado, Scope, those are my two favorite bats here uh, on the Orioles side. And then a little bit of interest in Boston bats. Yeah, for some reason it's not on like the, the gambling site that I normally use. Oh, it's, it's down there. I see it right there. Oh, no, so it's here. It's not on the, the other oh, okay. site where I normally like, it's like a cleaner way for me to look at it. What time is this game? Oh, start? gotcha. 7.10? Yeah. Um, I can actually get to this answer for us really quickly. Baltimore, Boston. And now that I've redone my sheet, I could like copy and paste this stuff basically in. Oh. So. Um, Gaussman, let's say five, seven. Who's pitching for Boston? David Price. I've got the run totals right here. Uh, we're five. Good. Okay. Let me grab Boston and. <clears throat> That's really weird. Wait, did I put their lineup in? I'm almost positive I did now that I think about it. Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> so, I got it here. Alright. Um, 61% chance to win for the Red Sox. I didn't add the starting pitchers. So, it's Gaussman for the Orioles. David Price for the Red Sox. That makes way more sense to me now. I remember seeing it when I dropped the lineups in, but for some reason I never entered a line because it's just not on that schedule. Interesting. Yeah. I'm going to have to pay attention to that now. I went to a static schedule, and I probably need to change that. Mm -hmm. um, Orioles not going to be a place I'm really looking from a hitting perspective. Gaussman's price is way too high. Um, I will probably have some David Price now that I see his price. And Red Sox bats look pretty good. Um, they'll probably be incredibly popular. I will have quite a bit of them. Uh, let's see. Ben Intendi looks really good. Hanley looks good. Mookie Betts looks good. Yeah, Red Sox will probably be one of the top two or three stacks of the night from an ownership perspective. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think they're fine. I don't want to fully target against Gaussman but they do have really good hitters. You can make a case for the Red Sox on most slates, really. So, I mean, I'm not going to hate you for stacking the Red Sox, even though I think Galson's a good pitcher. Man, that's weird that that was not there for me. That changes all of my crunches, too. <laughs> it's like it's the Red Sox are going to show up quite a bit. Uh, I would imagine I'd see less of, like, the Padres and stuff now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I like the Red Sox. They look good. And I'm fine having some David Price. Uh, I'd rather actually, I'd probably actually have Chad Cool over uh, over David Price, though. Me too. I, I'd rather have a lot of pitchers over David Price right now, not on him at all. That makes sense. Alrighty, that is it. Um, I feel like my crunches aren't super valid anymore. <laughs> they're. Uh, not including the Red Sox. How didn't I catch that? Why didn't so I saw these zeros for Gasman and Price? I just I must have just assumed it was uh, like a day game that I didn't filter out. Mm. Sorry, people. <laughs> Be around all day if you got any questions. It doesn't change like the main tenants. I really like Luke Weaver on DK. I'm gonna like Samarjo way more than I want to. Yeah. And uh, the Rangers bats and the Cubs bats are going to be popular stacks for me, one way or the other. Just get those get those Braves Sox. in there. Yeah, they're they're going to show up uh, a lot less now. Yeah, <laughs> now the Red Sox are going to be included. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, any hockey to plug? Uh, one game. It is Washington Tampa Bay game four. Tampa took game three. It's two one Washington. Um, should be another awesome night of hockey. More surprises, I'm sure. Vegas went up last night. I will have the showdown article out at some point today. And, yeah, should be good. There you go. No NBA tonight. No NBA tomorrow. Uh, Rockets tied that series up. Um, Chris was shoveling dirt on the Rockets last night. <laughs> now it's 1-1. One, one. 
Uh, so no basketball stuff. It's just all baseball. If you need anything from me, uh, hit me up throughout the day. Um, I'll be around most of the day. I'm not involved in the live stream tonight, so I'll stop in to give my home run pick. Um, but other than that, and you definitely want my home run pick because I'm one for one if we only include the past day. Yeah, you're on fire. Yeah, that's all I got. <clears throat> Uh, like and subscribe if you like this video and our channel. Um, you know, follow us both on Twitter. Follow Osmo underscore com on Twitter. Follow Osmo DFS on Twitter. Just follow us. Follow everything that we do. Um, we'll be back with or Jake and Chris will be back with the live stream tonight. Uh, Jake and I will be back in the morning for this video for Friday. So best of luck, everybody, and we'll talk to you later.